Tony La Russa has managed for 33 years with the Chicago White Sox, the Oakland Athletics, and the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Uh, he is now third all-time in career wins with 2,728. He was AL manager of the year three times, uh, 1983, 1988, and 1991, and a one-time NL manager of the year, which was in 2002. But he did get a whole bunch of uh, runner-ups, but I think four or five runner-ups or uh he's runner up four or five times uh he's he's thought of as one of the best managers in baseball history i would say i'd put him in my top three probably three or four but um let's just kick it right off with his first organization chicago white Sox. um 1979 was his first year he owes uh la Russa owes much of his credit to be becoming a manager to the uh, owner of the team, I believe, the, the general manager of the team, Roland Hemond, and he took over the managing job from Don Kessinger after Kessinger and the White Sox went 46 and 60. After La Russa took over, the team finished the year going 527 to 27, and they finished the entire year at a record of 73, 73 and 80. Not horrible. Only 14 games below 500, but not bad. Uh, in 1980, his first full year, uh, the White Sox, the White Sox finished 70 and 90 to finish five, uh, to finish fifth in the division and 26 games back in the AL West. At this time, Major League Baseball didn't realign the divisions like we know today, or even a, uh, a probably about a decade now. Uh, when the Astros were in the AL Central, not even that far. Uh, at this point in the AL West, you had the Kansas City Royals, the Chicago White Sox, the Minnesota Twins, the Oakland A's, Texas Rangers, California Angels, and Seattle Mariners. This was, like I said, Tony Lewis's first full year as manager. 1981, uh, there was a player strike that went from June 12th to July 31st, but at the... Um, with that strike shortened season, uh, the White Sox did improve in his second full year. They went 54 and 52 and six games back in the division. 1982, the White Sox kept improving. They had Harold Baines, Greg Lazinski of the old, uh, I believe, Phillies, the old Phillies team. Uh, Fisk was, uh, and Carl Fisk was their uh, main guys on offense. They had Lamar Hoyt as their number one pitcher, and Jerry Kuzman was a pretty good reliever. Uh, in their bullpen, they finished 87 and 75. Again, six games back in the division. 1983, this was the, uh, you would consider a breakout year for La Russa and the Sox. Uh, they finished 99 and 63, first in the division, and they made the playoffs. Uh, he won his first manager of the year award in 1983 as well. In the ALCS, the White Sox played the eventual World Series champion. Baltimore Orioles, so they, uh, White Sox did take game one behind Hoyt, but they never won another game. Orioles beat the White Sox on uh, two, three, and four, so they pre they beat them in four games. Uh, they looked really good. Uh, White Sox looked really good in 1983. Let's see if they can keep it up for next year. And they, had, they went down a little bit. Not horrible, but a little bit. And they finished with a record of 74 and 88. They ended up getting rid of Jerry Kuzman, but they did get Tom Seaver later in his career. But they did get Tom Seaver. Going from 84 to 1985, they had a bounce back year. They went 85 and 77, but they again finished six games back uh, behind this time the World Series winners of the Kansas City Royals and the California Angels. Um, 1986. All right, so this was the year Tony La Russa got fired from the White Sox. He started the year going 26 and 38, 12 games below 500. Not horrible to start off the season, but not great. Um, he ended up getting fired by Ken Harrelson, Hawk, the uh, the commentator, the broadcaster for the White Sox games. Now, um, he was the head honcho for a while, and he fired him and Dave Duncan, the old pitching coach. Um. Lewis ended up signing with the Oakland A's. Before he took the A's job, 
the team was 31 and 52 and for the rest of the season when they went they went 45 and 34 and finished third in the season ace team had all the pieces but they just needed somebody there to keep them together make sure they're all playing for the same thing i mean yeah mark mcguire jose canseco the bash brothers at that point dave stewart terry steinbach Eckersley was a closer at this point a fringe starter but a closer getting forced into that closer role and a late in career reggie jackson uh 1987 his first complete year with the a's they finished 500, 81 and 81, and they finished third in the division. But like I said in, in the previous year, Oakland has all the pieces there. They just have to fine tune everything, make sure everything's working all right, like a well-oiled machine. And from 1988, that's what they were, a well-oiled machine. A's finished the year 104 wins, 58 losses, and they finished first in the division. Tony La Russa won his second Manager of the Year award. Uh, they ended up sweeping the Boston Red Sox in four games in the ALCS and um, to for La Russa to get his first visit to the World Series. In the World Series, A's would have to play the Los Angeles Dodgers. Most memorable moment from this series is, of course, Kirk Gibson coming out of the dugout to pinch it with He's hob hobbling his way to uh, the batter's box. Eckersley throws. He tries to backdoor Gibson a slider. Gets too much of the plate. And he just pulls it down the right field line for a walk-off dinger in game one. Uh, Dodgers pounded. They pretty much pounded the A's into the dirt. Uh, Dodgers uh, took the series in five. And as we know, that was the last time they won the World Series was 1988. But... 1989, A's are coming back. A's had something to prove to everybody. They weren't just going to be a pushover, a one-hit wonder. Uh, they were going to prove that, hey, we're going to make it back. We're going to become a dynasty. The A's finished that year 99 and 63. A little down from 88, but not bad. Uh, only five games. Uh, they did beat the Toronto Blue Jays in five games in the ALCS, and they were going back to the World Series. This time, they were going to play the San Francisco Giants. The A's did win the World Series. They swept the Giants in four for their first World Series win since 1974. But they were overshadowed this time. And like in 88, they were overshadowed by Gibson's home run. This time, they were overshadowed by the huge earthquake that struck before Game 3. That had to postpone some of the games. All right, now, Lewis had a tough job in 1990. How are you going to keep this young team getting ready for next season they just won the world series they're out partying it's the end of the 80s everybody's gone party well he did a pretty good job because they won 103 and 59 they improved on last year uh again like in 88 they swept the red sox in four games to go to their third straight world series this time they're going to play the cincinnati reds that Reds team, I believe, had Barry Larkin, Eric Davis, Rob Dibble. Uh, I'm blanking on the other reliever's name. I know it. I'm blanking. I can't think. Uh, and I believe Pete Rose might have been the manager of that team. I think. But uh, this time they were on the receiving end of the broomstick. They got swept in four by the Reds. Uh, 1991. This is the decline. The 1991 was the start of the decline of La Russa's time in Oakland. 1991, they finished 84 and 70. Not bad, but a far cry from the previous year of 103 wins. He did win his third manager, AL Manager of the Year award. No, fourth. So this fourth? No, his third. Um, yeah, his third AL Manager of the Year award in 1991. But they placed fourth in the division. 1992, they had a little uptick. They finished 96 and 66, and they finished first in the division. But they lost to the Toronto Blue Jays in the ALCS in six games. The eventual World Series winner, Toronto Blue Jays. In 1993, they tasted nothing of the playoffs. They finished 68 and 94, dead last in the division. This is when the Titanic starts to sink. This is just everybody off the board. We're getting out of here. 
1994 short strike season, strike shortened season. Um, A's finished 51 and 63, last in the division when that strike happened. In 1995, the A's and La Russa finished 67 and 77, dead last again. That's his third uh, year in a row being dead last. So, Oakland A's management decided, hey, we're going to make some changes. We need to do something here. So, La Russa's like, okay. So, he left the Oakland A's job to take, o take over the recently vacated St. Louis Cardinals job after Joe Torre had just been fired. Um, and St. Louis made his job a whole lot easier when they signed his old closer from Oakland named Dennis Eckersley. You might have heard of him. Uh, 1996, he led that team to an 88 and 74 record, first in the division, first in the NL Central. Uh, they swept the Padres in the NL Diaz, but they lost to the Braves in seven. And during that 1996 season, one of his more controversial moves uh, during his time, especially his first year, was he was going to give more of the playing time to a shortstop named Royce Clayton instead of a guy named Ozzie Smith. Clayton was younger. Um, he was Ozzy Smith was getting older. It was his 19th season in the league, I believe. And they needed somebody that would play more than just a, um, and get more production out of somebody. Uh, so what Larusa said to Ozzy was, "We're gonna let it go to spring training, see what happens. Whoever does better will get the job." Um, Ozzy did the better job, but he still went with Clayton because in the sp in spring training, Ozzy got hurt. He injured his, I think, believe his hamstring, and they ended up going with Clayton before, and then. That spiraled into Ozzy Smith's retirement tour in 96. And Ozzy Smith felt disrespected because you have La Russa coming from the AL, come, going to the NL, his first year ever in the National League as a manager. And just, it's, he felt disrespected pretty much. But anyway, 1997, they finished fourth in division, 73 wins, 89 losses. This was the year that another former athletic that La Russa coach came over to the Cardinals, and that man was Mark McGuire. We traded three pitchers to get him. St. Louis traded three pitchers to get Mark McGuire, who at that point was, he was starting to get injured a little bit more, so that kind of helped. 1998, uh, St. Louis was third, finished third in the division, 83 wins, 79 losses. Not horrible, up better than 97. Um, in 1999, had another down year, finished 75 wins, 86 losses, fourth in the division. And then 2000, which since pretty much this millennium hit, 2000 to uh, 2011, this they were pretty much... St. Louis were St. Louis was in the playoffs mostly every year. 2000, the millennium. They finished first in the division, 95 and 67 record. They swept the Atlanta Braves in the NLDS, but they lost lost in 5 to the New York Mets, who would go on to lose to the Yankees. Uh 2001, uh St. Louis finished 93 and 69, which was second in the division. Uh and they got they lost in five to the Arizona Diamondbacks, who would become the eventual World Series champs. This was also Albert Pujols' first year in the league, one uh, rookie of the year as well. 2002, St. Louis finished 97-65, first in the division. They swept the Di Arizona Diamondbacks in the National League Divisional Series, but they lost in five to the New York, or not the New York Giants, to the San Francisco Giants in the NLCS. This was also Tony La Russa's fourth Manager of the Year award, but first for the National League. Uh, 2003, La Russa and the Cardinals uh, finished third in the division, but had a decent record, 85 and 77. Not horrible. This could arguably be called La Russa's probably best year managing, other than maybe, the, I believe, the 1989 A's 
and that would be 2004 St. Louis. They finished 105 and 57, first in the first in the division. Uh, they beat the Dodgers in four in the division series, and they beat the Astros in seven in the championship series. And this was the first time the Cardinals went to the uh, World Series since 1987 against the Twins. Um, and they got swept by the Red Sox. That was the year the Red Sox finally broke the curse. <clears throat> uh, 2005, the another pretty good year. 162. 100 wins, 62 losses. Pretty good. Uh, first in the division, this was Pujols' first MVP. Chris Carpenter won the Cy Young Award this year. Uh, they did. They swept the Padres in the division divisional series, but in the championship series, they lost in six to the Astros. Two thousand six, they finished eighty three and seventy eight. Big, big uh, drawback from 05. but they finished first in the division. They beat the Padres again, but this time in four in the division series. They beat the Mets in six. Wainwright's curveball that just froze Beltron, which was amazing. And they beat them, and Detroit made it to the World Series, which drew back comparisons uh, comparisons to 1968, when the Tigers beat us in the, or beat the Cardinals in the division or in the World Series. <clears throat> but this time, St. Louis beat the Tigers in five. Uh, I believe David Eckstein was the MVP of that series. 2007, a little taking it back a year. World Series hangover, you I guess you could call it. They finished third in the division, 78 wins, 84 losses. In 2008, um, St. Louis finished 86 and 76, fourth in the division. Uh, and this was Pujols' second MVP award. In 2009, St. Louis finished first in the division, going 91 and 71. Pujols' third MVP award, back-to-back -back MVP awards, uh, third for his career, but they got swept by the Dodgers in the NLDS. One thing I remember of that, of that was uh, we got Matt Holiday, and I don't remember who hit it to him, but somebody hit a liner to him and it hit him in the glove, and he dropped to score. Uh, I think the game-winning run on one of the games. But going on, 2010, the Cardinals finished second in the division. No playoffs. 86-76. Uh, and, and in 2011, uh, La Russa missed some time uh, due to a nasty outbreak that he had with the shingles virus during the season. I believe during the summer, around maybe June, July. Um, this was his last year as a manager in Major League Baseball. Um, the team finished 90 and 72. They finished second in the division. They had a miraculous effort to make the playoffs. They were down, I think, 10 and a half, I think 10 and a half, 11 and a half back in the wild card with 30, uh, 30, uh, plus days in the left in the season. And they managed to make the wild card. Now, in the Divisional Series, they beat the Philadelphia Phillies, who were the best team that year, in five. They had one of the best rotations that year as well. Uh, in the NLCS, they beat the Brewers in six. A pretty good, a really good team with Fielder and Braun. Uh, and in the World Series, um, St. Louis beat the Texas Rangers in seven. Pro this is probably my favorite World Series. And... What a way for La Russa to go out, holding the title up and just holding up the title up, having a good time, and then he left on top. That's literally all you could say. And one thing that La Russa, I remember, always would say in this book was uh, his pretty much his, I guess you could call catchphrase, was just win the series. What's all you got to do? Just win the series. If you win the series, you win two-thirds of the games in the season. But yeah, I mean, what a what a hell of a career that La Russa had as a manager. I mean, let's, just to recap, he had three World Series rings, two with the A's, no, one with the A's, 
two in the two in St. Louis. He went to the World Series, 88-89-90, uh, 04-06-11. So he went to the World Series six times. He won three, so that's a 500 record. Uh, third all-time in wins with managers. Uh, he had 86 total ejections, which is not a lot for a 33-year career. So that's like averaging almost two a year. Under two a year. Uh, he won manager of the year four times. And he had a career winning percentage. On all three teams that he managed. Above 500. So Oakland. St. Louis. And the White Sox. When he was the manager. Had above a 500 record. With him as manager. And. I think that. Really says why he's one of the best to do it really. That's just my that's just my thinking. But uh, if you guys liked this video, press the like button, subscribe to this channel. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, share this video with all your friends and buddies. Comment down below who you guys want me to see to do maybe a career look back on, whether it's a player, a manager, a owner's like trade history. See how that is. But uh. Yeah, share this video with all your friends and buddies, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!